there are many concepts of a Christian walk that as we've as time goes by and, and culture does what culture does and it evolves uh, based upon the influences it has on it, there, there are many concepts that, that seem to separate or, or conflict more and more with what's considered good practices or to be a, a strong person. The term and concept of submission would, would be one of those concepts. To be a strong person means, in this day and age, means you don't submit. You demand what you want, what you deserve, and what you expect, and you go get it. The term and concept of submission would definitely not be heard in many uh, contemporary wedding ceremonies. The concept, um, and it's a concept, uh, once again, that is in conflict with what we see around us. We don't have to read too many too far in the sports page for those who like who like reading sports news uh, to read about the next athlete who um, who is in conflict with management or in conflict with with uh, fellow teammates. As you can imagine, the uh, the amount of, of of that ego goes along with someone who is so good uh, at the, what they do, but we don't see a we don't see that uh, attitude of submission. Or how about students willing to submit to their teachers? It's also not unusual to be reading a news article how um, parents were, were um, taking school boards or teachers to task or suits because of, of discipline that was non-physical discipline that was trying to be implemented to, to control students. It is an environment uh, that is the antithesis of God's way. But submission is a Christian concept, something that we need to strive for. It's something that needs to be a part of our life. When there is strife, whether it be in our personal life or our relationships, it is likely the result of either or both sides not yielding to one another. So today I would like to re re review the importance of submission in a Christian life and how it remains integral in our walk. How it is so important to, to reflect on this time as we approach Passover season. Let's begin in James 4. One of the, one of the more well-known scriptures when it comes to uh, submission. James chapter 4 and uh, verse 7. The statement follows... James laying out a problem of, of quarrels and problems and conflict in, in the congregation and among the ecclesia. And he summarizes in verse 7, it's kind of like a therefore, his direction is submit therefore to God. Resist, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit to God. Now, I probably would not get much, much argument from, uh, from most of you, or all of you, that uh, we, we should submit to God. But what does that mean? Submission means different things to, to different people. So we'll review scriptures. What do the scriptures say in applying this concept of submission? First, let's begin with this word, Submit. As I mentioned, it maybe carries a negative connotation, but what's, what's, what's the Greek? It's, uh, the Greek comes from, or the Greek word, I should say, is translated from the Greek word um, hupotasso, hupotasso. And the definition is to arrange under, to subordinate, uh, to subject oneself, to submit to one's control. a common use of the Greek during that time, it was a military term, meaning to, to arrange as, a, as in a troop or a group of people in a military fashion under the command of a leader. In a non-military use, it was a voluntary attitude of giving in, cooperating, 
assuming responsibility and carrying a burden. Another use of the word to help us understand the concept is, was to apply, to, to submit, was to attach a document at the end of another document. So in, in uh, experience, for example, working with contracts and supply contracts, you have a, an agreement. You have a supply agreement, a contract, and typically at the end of the contract, you have an appendices. The appendices would be added to the contract. It wouldn't take priority over the document, but it would still be part of the contract. And that, that, that additional document would be subject to or, or, or follow the, the authority of the main document. So this is submission. A couple key points in this is it is a willful following. It's in a willful, it's willful obedience. For me to submit, it is something that I must be willing to do, to yield my control to someone. So when we think about submission, let's first review submission in, in a few different applications. Let's talk about, first of all, submission at the individual or relationship level. When we talk about hupotasso, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Ephesians 5 and verse 22. I was learning, learning I, I'm not, I don't want to read the fruit of the Spirit. Um, <laughs> Galatians. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 22. Wives, be subject, or that same hupotasso, or you could say submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. As I mentioned, to, to read this word in nowadays a mixed company, you could probably be accused of a hate crime or, or practicing hate language. We continue on, though, in verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, and as Christ is also is the head of the church, he himself being the savior of the body. But as the church is subject to Christ, so also the wives ought to, ought to be uh, husbands and everything, to their husbands and everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself up um, for her. And then if you look at verse 31, you know, the concept here is, is oftentimes our history, us guys, we, 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 we or is it we guys? No, us guys, we, we, we got hung up on this, well, wives need to submit to me. And the scriptures do say, wives, submit to your husband. I'm not co I'm contradicting that. But the context is a, a two-way street. We also have husbands loving their wives. In verse 31, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother. And sh in verse 31, excuse me. For the, this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife. And the two shall become one flesh. It is not a one-sided or unilateral submission. And it's just submitting to one another. As a matter of fact, if we jump up to verse 21, Paul, still talking about the relationship, says to be subject to one another or to submit to one another in the fear of Christ. So when we think about submission in, at the individual level, or we can apply submission at the individual level, not only in the marriage relationship, in this case, we're pretty much talking about the marriage relationship, but the same concept now applies in our relationship or individual relationships, whether it be as part of the ecclesia or, or outside of the ecclesia, is for us to be willing to have a strong relationship, we need to be willing to submit ourselves to that other person as part, or to, to submit ourselves to that relationship. You know, historically, we have not always applied this the best way in the Church of God, the concept of, of submission. 
the key, once again, is we cannot demand submission. We can demand obedience. We can put the fear into someone so that they're afraid to do anything else. But that is not submission. That is not godly submission. Submission is a willful desire to subject ourselves to something else or to someone else. So we have submission in the individual and in the relationship level. There's also submission to those in authority, which is another hot-button topic in this day and age. Let's look at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. We'll talk about submitting to authority. Romans chapter 13 and verse 1. Every person is to be in subjection to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those who exist are established by God. God established the concept of authority. He allowed that to happen. He created that as part of man's walk and man's life. And, and verse 2, Therefore, whoever resists authority has opposed the ordinance of God, and they who have opposed will receive condemnation upon themselves. Verse 3, For rulers are not a cause of fear for good behavior, but for evil. Do you want to have no fear of authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For it is a minister of God to you for good. But if you do what is evil, be afraid, for it does not fear the sword for nothing. For it is a minister of God, an avenger who brings wrath on the one who practices evil. Therefore, it is necessary to be in subjection, not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. For because of this, you, will, you also pay taxes for rulers or servants of God, devoting themselves to this very thing. Now, does that mean that all leaders are good? Unfortunately not. Whether it be dictators or even elected presidents. We, we, we see leaders who, who, who may not be uh, what we would consider leaders in the context or in the spirit of Jesus Christ. But God's instruction is that the concept of authority he ordained, and our observation of authority is not based upon the quality of the person that is in that authority, but the value of authority or submitting to authority is for us. And he also defines it once again in, in verse 4 as being a, a minister. But what about those in authority who are, who are not the sharpest tool in the shed? Uh, let's look at 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 13. First Peter, First Peter 2 and verse 13. Submit yourself for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether to a king or as the one in authority, or to governors as sent by him for the punishment of evil doers and the praise of those who do right. For such is the will of God that by doing right you may silence the ignorance of foolish men. Act as free men and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as, a bond, as of bond, bond slaves of God. Honor all people. Honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. The instructions is, is that we, we respect authority in that ordained institution that, that God established. Verse 18, servants, be submissive to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and gentle, but also to those who are unreasonable. For, the, for this finds favor. It, for the sake of conscience towards God, a person bears up under sorrows when suffering, when suffering unjustly. For what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? But if when you do what is right and suffer it, you patiently endure it, this finds favor from God. God. 
And once again, God established this concept of authority. And, and as Peter also iterates or stresses as much as Paul, that the question of submission is for our benefit and for, for God's benefit. God is looking, as we will review, God is looking to establish a kingdom made up of, of priests to help him to minister into the kingdom of God. He's already seen it, what happens when someone does not submit. This is a character that he wants us to develop. And this concept of you know, servanthood, I was talking about this with Joe not too long ago, he was, com- excuse me, he was commenting about the, uh, you know, how people take scriptures out of context. And this is one of those that people take scriptures out of context. Well, what do you mean servants and slavery? Does that mean the, the Bible supported or, or uh, condoned slavery and promoted slavery? And as we know, it did not. The concept here is those who are willing to enter into a relationship as being a bondservant whether it be to work for someone for shelter and food, to work for someone to learn a trade, and whatever that agreement was. But either way, the concept is, is that we respect that, uh, that concept or that establishment of authority. And this is something that we practice or can practice. Being in the workplace, for those of you who have also been in the workplace, I have worked for companies and share bosses who were, were very good, uh, smart, caring, great leaders. And I have worked for bosses who were not. Uh, bosses who maybe were promoted beyond their capability. Uh, uh, bosses who, for whatever reason, they're in the position that, that they're in. But at the end of the day, there's still authority. Just like the same concept, if I choose to work for a company, I am in essence that bondservant to my master, the boss. And how I relate and how I interact with my boss, how much I may or may not agree with them, is kind of core to who I am from, as a Christian and applying those Christian principles. If I fight back, tell my boss constantly how he's wrong, how he's not very smart, it's probably not going to go the best for me. But how do I practice submitting to one in authority? Submission to one in authority also includes submitting to the church and elders. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter, excuse me, 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15. First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 15. Now I urge you, brethren, you know the household of Stephanus, that they were the first fruits of Achaia, and that they devoted themselves for ministry to the saints, that you also be in subjection to such men and to everyone who helps and the work of labors. I rejoice over the coming of Stephanus and the for, for, uh, for Tanatus and Achaeus because they have supplied what was lacking on your part, for they have refreshed my spirit and yours, therefore acknowledge such men. The instruction by Paul to the church at Corinth was, was to, to practice or, or to show that, that respect towards authority. And we also look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 5. 1 Peter 5 and verse 5. You younger men, likewise, be subject to your elders, and all of you clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. For God is, imposed, is opposed to the proud, but give grace, gives grace to the humble. Or for some of us, this may rub us the wrong way. What do you mean being subject to the, the ministers and being an authority? 
It just says historically husbands have not held up their end of the bargain on how to lead with love. Some elders in our past and our histories have maybe not demonstrated a, a service reflective of God's love. Now, that's unfortunate. That does not they'll do away with the concept of authority that God's established. Just like there's husbands who, who did not properly love their wives and build that relationship where the, 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 the wife was willing to submit to, to, to him, or vice versa. The same applies. Just because that happened doesn't mean that God does away with the marriage covenant. He does, does away with the concept and the scriptures and the teaching. And it's the same thing with, with submitting to, to um, elders and ministers. We submit to the church and to elders. And when, and when we think about the concept of applying submission in this, in this environment, it's also, it applies to, once again, our relationships with each other, and, and when I say one in authority. I remember when I first started attending, uh, way back when, I, I had a major disagreement with someone on how chairs should be set up. I kid you not. And um, it, it, was, uh, it was for social, and I thought it should go the other way. And I started thinking, well, wait a second. At the time, I was a deacon. I thought, well, I'm thinking, wait a second. I'm the deacon here. I'm the one in authority. Um, and then I began to realize and, and think and reflect, wait a second, that person was responsible for setting up the hall, not me. They're responsible. They're the one, quote unquote, in authority, setting it up on behalf or for the congregation on the direction of, of the pastor. I was not submitting to authority. Forget the title. They were the ones responsible, and I needed to submit myself to them. Sure, I could give my ideas and suggestions. But the concept of submission and submitting to one another just doesn't apply to titles. So if submitting to relationships and submitting to authority and submitting to the church and elders, let's talk about submitting then finally to God. I think it's a common concept we reflect on often, so we'll just cover a couple of scriptures. Ephesians chapter 1 and, and verse 18 Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might. Continuing on in verse 20. Which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his, his right hand in the heavenly, heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and, and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things in subjection under his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. You know, the Father putting all things in subjection or submission to Jesus Christ, establishing, once again, that authority. Also Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 9. Hebrews 12 and verse 9. Furthermore, we had heavenly fathers to discipline, to, to discipline us, and we respected them. Shall we not much rather be subject to the, spirit, to the Father of spirits and live? We need to be subject to our Father. 
when we think about and apply the concept of submission, we talked about the different areas that we can apply submission. It's not only submitting to God, but it's submitting to authority and, and submitting to one another, submitting to relationships, submitting in the family, children, submitting to their parents. This, this whole concept, you can't separate one aspect from another. The Christian attitude in developing one of, of being willing to submit to one another is not a, a light switch we turn on and turn off. It becomes the core of who we are. And we cannot separate the concept of submission into what we want to submit to and what we do not want to. Or how do we want to apply it? God's way applies evenly in consistency within our lives. When he established concepts and he established truths and, and ways, for example, of how we're dealing, dealing with each other, it's consistent. No matter how you apply it and when the settings you apply, it, it, there's a consistency there. And so we don't get to pick and choose. Well, I, I'm, 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 submit, I'm submitting to God, but church elders, not so much. Submitting to God, but I have struggles, problems submitting to my spouse. We have to apply it consistently. So then why is it so important? Let's look at Hebrews, or in Hebrews. Let's go back to chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2. I touched on this before, Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 1. For this reason we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable and even and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How are we going to survive without God's, sal God's salvation, his mercy, what, his plan? After it was at first spoken through the Lord, and it was confirmed to us by those who heard it, God also testifying with them both by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit according to his will. Verse 5, For he did not subject to angels the world to come concerning which we are speaking, but one who has testified somewhere saying, What is man that you remember him? Or the son of man that you are concerned about him? You have made him for a little while lower than the angels and have crowned him with glory and honor and have appointed him over the works of your hands to have put all things in subjection under his feet. As we mentioned before, God's plan is to bring his kingdom, physical kingdom, to this earth. God wants to know that we can participate and be a part of that plan. That we're not going to say, no, I have a better way. God, you don't know what you're talking about. He wants to know that we can submit. And the submission is, once again, in every part of our lives. It's not the seventh trump sounding. People resurrected, starting to, to, uh, to rise, and you say, okay, I'm ready. I, I understand I need to submit now. It's not that easy. We need to learn now the concept of submission. Because when he puts his creation in a total submission under Jesus Christ to his saints, he doesn't want to repeat of what happened before. Also, why is it so important? Let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3 and verse 1. Being... Part of the, the duty of a, of a Christian is being an example for others. And why we need to show that submission. Is to be that example. First Peter chapter three, verse one. In the same way, you wives be submissive to your own husbands, so that that even if any of them are disobedient to the word, that they may be one without a word by the behavior of their wives as they observe your, your chaste and respectful behavior. Here in this case, it was, the example was given by Peter about the wise being an example, but once again, the, 
uh, it works both ways. But in this case, the spouse could be an example to say, by your Christian attitude, by your attitude and love of, of, of submission, that you can be an example and, and win him over. Why is submission being so important? Is as we read before, submission is at the heart. We started off in James. James' instructions for submission and why he asked for people to submit to God and therefore by submitting to one another was because of the quarrels and conflicts that were in the congregation at the time. In my experience of, of counseling and working and talking with different people who, who have conflicts, the one thing that's very, very important, and very apparent, I should say, is that at least one, if not both parties, were not willing to submit. They were not willing to yield. And I remember specifically we're talking with uh, one young man who was, who was struggling. And I was commenting about these concepts of, of, of respecting and, and, and understanding and, and uh, being willing to submit to that relationship and what is important to, to his, his wife. And the response was, well, I will submit when she learns to, tell, when she learns to do what I tell her to do. That's not submission. We can't control what someone else does. We can only control what we do. And so in that relationship, and in a relationship when there is, when there is strife, what, what, do we do, what do I need to do? What do I need to do to change? That's why submission is so important so important in a relationship with God. It's why it's so important in the, in the, in the plan of salvation. It's why it's so important in, in, in the ecclesia, in our relationship with each other. So how do we develop this attitude of submission? Just a few points. When you think about developing this concept of submission, because it comes easier than, for some than others. Just like any trait, there are certain traits that you know, that's, that's a piece of cake. I, I, there's no problem. It just flows from me. You know, being respectful maybe just flows. Or, or, or showing love, it just flows. I, I may have problems in other areas that, that might be a bit more of a struggle. And th this is one concept of submission. Some of us, by nature and our personalities, submitting is, is go there. Okay. You know, it, it's part of our, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're all different personalities. And, but if we're one that, that it's a bit more of a struggle, we like the fight. You're not going to tell me what to do. I'm going to stand my ground. And yes, you know who you are. And I know who I am. It's a bit more of a struggle. But it is something that we must focus on. So how do we develop this attitude? Let's look back in First Peter 5. A couple pages back, we actually just read it. But let's read it again. In this context, it talks about younger men subject to elders, but then clothe yourself with humility towards one another. For God is opposed to the proud, but gives grace to the humble. We need to clothe ourselves with humility. What does that mean, clothe ourselves with humility? The word Peter use, uses... And I will not pronounce it. It's like a seven-syllable Greek word. And the two- and three-syllable Greek words are, are tough enough. But it means to have a humble opinion of oneself, a lowliness of mind. It is an important quality of what makes up the mind of Christ. The same concept of uh, humility and lowliness of mind, what, what we read in Philippians 2, verse 3 through 5. And let this mind be in you. Christ as being the ultimate inheritor of, of uh, authority. He knew the plan. He knew what his future was. 
And what was his relationship that, that was displayed, especially during, the, uh, uh, during his last meal with, with his uh, disciples? It was one where he took up the cloth and girded himself and was willing to wash. And that's Christ's attitude, his humility. He, he understood, even in his position, he understood his, his, where he was in the authority with God the Father. He understood his role. He understood his purpose. He understood his, what he could offer and give. And that humility is the same that we need to, to clothe ourselves with. When we hold to the theory that we know more, that we're superior, that we're smarter or better looking or whatever, fill in the blank, we have obviously constrained our ability to show humility and in turn to submit. How do we develop an attitude of submission? I mentioned it briefly, our willingness to yield. Our willingness to yield. To become part of something. The roundabouts are now more popular in, in, uh, in uh, the U.S., especially up in this area. More popular uh, out east. But for roundabouts to work, is a great traffic tool. It's, it's, you keep flowing. It's much more efficient than, than stoplights and stop signs. But for it to work, you got to be willing to yield. You got to willing be be willing to make it work. Our human nature will allow us to question ourselves by by willing to give up on our position. It, it, that, that human nature will say, "No, no, you, you got to stand firm." You can't, you can't allow so much to run over you. you. You've got to demand what's right and demand what's yours. That's, that's the human nature talking. But do we recognize the greater thing? Yes, we may be a great person. But we pale in significance to the, the, the greater something. That's something being God's plan of salvation. Are we willing to become part of something bigger? And of course, we think about the kingdom of God and the plan of salvation. Sure, we want to yield to that because we want to be a part of it. But once again, how do we practice that? How do we, how do we find those microcosms of events and activities that, that allow ourselves to fit into that concept of, of yielding? I'm pretty much more of a keep-to-myself type of a person. At times, it's difficult to yield to become part of something greater. It's not easy at times. Do we recognize every Sabbath service and our conversations being willing to become part of something greater and how we interact with each other? Through our efforts and our time, do we recognize how we can become part of, uh, of something greater? And to do that, we must be, be willing to yield. We must be willing to add ourselves, to lose some of our individuality and some of our identity to become part of something greater. Now, especially for, for those who are a bit more of an independent spirit and young folks around us, you may say, well, wait a second then. Do you want me to become a yellow pencil? Do you want me to become, or for you Star Trek, the next generation fans, the Borg? You remember the Borg? You just completely lose any identity and you become part of this big, massive machine. No, 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 that's not God's way. God created us to be unique and bring our own special spark like Irene. She brought her own special spark to what she was a part of. We bring our own special spark. We're not asking to give that up. We're not asking for you to become yellow pencils. But what we're asking, and what the scriptures are asking, is to become a something, part of something bigger. And that does mean willing to submit, to put sometimes our own opinions and and thoughts aside for the, for, the, for the good. Not to lose them, but how we manage that, and how we manage that relationship. And we build a spirit of, uh, we, we build that, that attitude and that concept of, of submission 
when we get a 2020 focus, a vision of what the other party needs, the other person, the other individual, the other group, the fill in the blank. Submitting means we understand what the other person needs and we're willing to, to, to give it. In this case, it's uh, in the scriptures when we talk about submitting to God and God's plan of salvation, it's, it's clear. God lays out what, what he expects from us and what he wants. Sometimes our vision may be a little cloudy in how we read it and interpret it at times, but God's very clear in his, in his plan as, as, as he is revealed to those he's working with. But what about the other parts of when we think about submitting? Submitting those relationships, those, those personal relationships, or submitting as part of the body. If, if we're submitting, we need to be attuned to that other individual, that other group, that other party, and, and, and what they need, what they're looking for, and, and what that greater thing is. If, if you are submitted, you are turned into the, you are tuned in to the needs and, and not to, to people's shortcomings. We should not allow and be careful not to allow you know, people's flaws and, and, and issues to short circuit God's instruction and our duty to, to submit, to be a part of that relationship. As we reflect on the days of love and bread, this is a perfect time to do that. Reflect on where, where are we with our humility. The obvious is we, as we review our relationship with God and how are we at our submission to God and, God and in his way. Remember Paul's instructions, though, for uh, those bringing a sacrifice to the altar is saying, leave your sacrifice at the altar. Go resolve that conflict with your brother and then come back. Or stated in another way, go work on that submission to that relationship. Go work on submitting to one to another and, and then come back. This is a perfect time for us during this Passover season to do the same thing. How are we at submitting to God? How are we at submitting to the scriptures in his way? How are we at submitting as part of our relationships and our families? How are we at submitting as, as part of, of the ecclesia? Part of our efforts of walking the Christian way of life that brings happiness to all is this attitude of submitting. Submitting to each other, submitting to authority, submitting to elders, submitting to authority, submitting to Jesus Christ, submitting to God the Father. And it is by developing this Christian trait that we can be an example. We can be an example to each other. We can be an example in this world. And we can be an example in, in the coming kingdom of God. Have a good Sabbath.